Hi everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today's two minute tip is all about the paper storage you see behind me in every single video. Now lots of you ask me, how does that work? Does my paper warp? All those kinds of questions. So I thought I'd do a quick two minute tip. Now, what are they first of all? They are these stamp and storage units. Now, we what we did was we popped them on their side just like this and Greg screwed them together into a long piece and they're on top of the Ikea draw units. Now the great thing about these units are, is that these dividers slide out and it's only the center one that is fixed in place. You can slide all of them out and then he was able to screw them together into one long piece and then screw them into the Ikea Alex drawer. So they're really rigid and popped in there. Now down the sides of my room, I have more Alex drawers and you will see that in a room tour soon. And he's promised you'll get a room tour because he got his new lens. So you're definitely gonna get your room tour. I have the 12 by 12 versions of these. So they come in an eight and a half by 11 version and they come in a 12 by 12 version. They also now come in a six by six and an eight by eight version for paper pads and other paper sizes. Plus they come in versions that fit in your Ikea Calyx. So lots and lots of options. I'll pop them all in the video description below for you. So loads and loads of options for you. But you can keep them both ways. Now, I had some questions about paper warping. My paper have been in these now probably for around six months. I've had my room built like this. I don't have any issues. This is a stack of paper that was in a calyx. It doesn't, in one of these rather. Now it's like this, so it doesn't fully fill that piece you can see there, but it hasn't warped. So if I now take this out and I pop it on my surface, there is nothing. That piece of paper doesn't have any warping to it. It's a nice straight piece of paper. I can use it. So I haven't had any issues like that. And of course you can keep them on the side or you could keep it upright like this. I did pull one of the dividers out of the 12 by 12 ones because this is what I have down the side of my room and I label them all. So this is where my foam around goes and then I have one that's labeled Upo and I have one that's labeled watercolor. I have Stonehenge, my Rhinia papers, etc., etc. So I have them all labeled so I can just see at a glance. I also have all of my Cricut pads in one. I have another one for the Elizabeth. Elizabeth craft papers, my tonic 12 by 12s, etc, etc. So I kind of have it all categorized down the sides and it doesn't have to look so pretty because you don't see it on camera all the time. The ones behind me are full of my tonic craft perfect papers and I have it in a kind of rainbow order. Now it does need redoing because we have one trend already released and we have another trend coming out. So I will be recategorizing it so you might see some changes in the ones behind me. In each um, cubby, I also keep one of these. This is a job ticket holder. I found on Amazon somewhere that sells them in bulk really inexpensively. So I'll link that up too. But what I do is I cut the top and the side of that off. And inside of there, I put all of my scraps. So that's how I keep the scraps for my craft perfect. I did do a video the other day on my other cardstock story. So how I keep my Gina K's, my lawn fawns, my hero arts, my American crafts. If you missed that video, you can check the top right hand corner. What I do is I keep it all in quarters or fourths. So I have my cardstock cut down by the FedEx store. And then it also keeps all of my uh, scraps in that system. But because I don't have these cut down, I keep them in larger pieces. This is how I store those scraps. And this works really well. So it just goes in here. And then the piece goes in just like this and in it goes. And then I have a tag system that keeps kind of it all catalogued for me so I know exactly what I have. And I also have um, in each piece, and I didn't take it out just so I know where this one goes back, I have a piece laminated of each piece of cardstock. That's just because of the amount of volume I have of each cardstock. And I keep that in there with a little label on it. And that just tells me if I'm getting low on a particular cardstock because I work for Tonic and then I need to know if I you know, need to order another pack of that cardstock. So that's how I kind of work that system. But that's more because it's my job. You might not need to have that if you're getting low on a particular color. Um, that works really well for me. So that's what the ones are beside me. As I say, I have 12 by 12 down the side, which allows me to work with different sizes and things. And then I just have these labels on here and I just make these with my label maker and I'll link my label maker in the video description too. Thank you so much for joining me for today's tip. I hope you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you are enjoying this tip series. We have them all in a two minute tip playlist as well so you can check that out and we have a storage and organization playlist so you can also check those out 
too. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications of our daily videos of tricks, tips, tutorials, techniques, and so much more here at Hedgehog Hollow. And don't forget to check out our Hedgehog Hollow subscription kit, which comes out every month full of exclusive products that you cannot get anywhere else. And you could get one of those fun black and white polka dot boxes on your mailbox every single month. Details in the top right hand corner and in the video description for you. As I say, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. And I will see you again tomorrow. Happy stamping, everyone. Bye.